Well, good morning, folks. So I guess the next process we need to do is let's make the bottom of this here bridge that we decided to use on our uh, 40,000 subscriber giveaway guitar. We gotta make it flat on the bottom. So uh, let me show you how we're gonna do that. Move the show outside today because it's just a little messy for doing indoors. So let's just give this a little downward angle there. Basically, I just got a flat piece of paper on a flat piece of table, and we're just gonna sit here and sand away. And I'm just gonna keep checking. Uh, I know it's gonna take a while, but I'm gonna just keep checking to make sure that we have, you know, we're taking the same amount off of both sides, but it'll be pretty easy to tell. All right, so uh, after some messing around and some sawdust and some mess that I spared you, uh, we sanded this thing back and forth on some sandpaper. We got it nice and flat on the bottom so it's no longer an arch top piece. It really only took about 10 or 15 minutes. It wasn't as much work as I thought. And then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna notch the bottom of this to where it more or less will locate right there and sit down on the on there now when you take the strings off it might still fall off but it will more or less try to i'm going to try to make it go as tightly to the right place as possible and then of course we're going to mark it and stuff so that it's super fail safe for the person that owns the guitar to set it up um but i guess the next thing we need to do now is go ahead and make the pickup and put it in and replace this because we're going to put a push pull here um and you know, make it to where it's it's all done because the next part is gonna be the nut. It's gonna be a whole like compound motion of setting up string alignment and all that kind of stuff. So this is gonna be a bit of a project, but that is where we are. So that is gonna be sweet. And we're just gonna go ahead and lay, uh, we'll go ahead and put the um, roller bridge that I bought the other day, if it works, I think it'll work uh, on this dude right here. And this is gonna look proper Gretsch now, man. Proper Gretsch style bridge and Bigsby and hum size filter. Yeah, way overkill for a $300 guitar, but who cares, right? It's so funny because people constantly are in the comments of all my videos like, why are you putting so much work and money into whatever? And I mean, I really wanna make a t-shirt. It literally is just like hashtag not your guitar because who cares, right? Um, I just got done doing a project. I didn't show it on video because it was for somebody that, I mean, I do have clients that like, they don't want me to tell everything that they're doing. So anyway, this, I was working on this other guitar for this guy and making a bunch of changes. And I was laughing to myself, who would actually do this? But it doesn't really matter because they're the ones that own the guitar. They're the ones that make the choice, and I don't care. I don't care if you have a Telecaster shaped like a flying V. I don't care. Tradition holds zero for me. Like, I do not care about the guitar. Um, it is a tool, and if you want to make it into something as an expression of yourself, then go right ahead. I do not care about... I mean, I wouldn't personally like cut up some sweet vintage piece that was worth a ton of money but if it's yours and you own it i'm not going to be mad if you do i mean it's yours it's not mine so um that is my feeling on doing stuff like this that is like totally wacky but who cares we're trying stuff man um and that's the idea with these builds i, I want to inspire other people to be like I have this guitar I wonder what I could do let's go crazy maybe we are crazy I don't know I don't care it's fun okay so I think what I did, I'm gonna do is I went ahead and marked the bridge center pins and I'm gonna go ahead and just notch this out now um, I'm basically gonna do it by hand until it fits flat on the guitar with those, so the, everything, what's gonna be cool about the whole thing is everything's gonna be reversible, except for the holes in the guitar from the Bigsby, of course, but, so that's what I'm gonna do right now, and I'm gonna go ahead and cut this with a, I'm gonna just use a Dremel, try to do it freehand, we'll see what happens. 
Well, I would have to. S well, I would have to say that is not too shabby for doing it freehand. I didn't have like an end mill handy or anything. We'll clean up the edges a little bit and make it look nice, but here's the idea. Now that bad boy sits right over there like that. And now we have a bridge. I'll figure out a way to peg it to the, the body so that it doesn't move around. I'm not super concerned about it right now, but we'll, we'll figure something out. Maybe I'll just put a pin in the body and then put a pin in the bridge and I don't know. Or maybe it'll just float. Who knows? And we'll just mark it. I don't know. Who cares? This is fun. So yeah, problem solved. All right, so we did some work on this guitar. Got to throw some strings on it. And I thought, since we're putting locking tuners on our 40,000 subscriber giveaway guitar, I thought I would talk for a second about locking tuners because I think there is a pretty wide misconception about them and why we use them. So let me get the strings on this thing and uh, we'll chat about that for just a second. Okay, so these are Klusen uh, locking tuners. They've got little knobs on the top, but the theory of locking tuners is all the same, pretty much no matter what the guitar is. They're not there really for quote unquote tuning stability. Everybody thinks that if you put locking tuners on a guitar, that suddenly your guitar is gonna be like, perfectly in tune all the time. That's not what they're for. What they're for, more or less, is convenience. Now, what I will tell you is that when you use locking tuners, there is a tuning stability kind of side benefit uh, if you use them correctly. But that's not the main goal. So we're gonna lock this E string down and we're gonna bring it up to tension. Okay, so here's the deal. When I did that just now, there is no wrap. I did not wrap, I did not wrap it. We literally, here, let's bring this around to the correct, there we go. Literally pull it through the locking tuner, pull it tight, lock it down, and tune the guitar. There's no wrapping around, there's no none of that. So. In that respect, there is a little bit of tuning stability going on there because you don't have any kind of coil of strings or anything. But the main goal, honestly, is convenience and speed and changing strings on your guitar. And these ones are cool because you can take a screwdriver and just give them a little extra little like that and then they're nice and tight. They're not by themselves going to make your guitar stay in tune better. That's the job of the setup and the nut and a lack of friction uh, in the guitar moving back and forth and the ability to keep everything uh, returning to pitch as you play because as you play you're pulling on the string you're bending the string you're fretting the string letting it go and everything all the friction points need to allow that guitar to allow that string to return back to pitch basically move back to its original position the locking tuners don't really have anything to do with that they just hold everything in place it's not I don't know it's just kind of a misnomer that I think people think that you just throw a set of locking tuners on something and then all of a sudden your guitar is going to stay in tune. I see it all the time in groups and stuff. I put locking tuners on it and it still goes out of tune all the time. What's going on? Well, it's probably because your nut sucks or because you need some other setup issues addressed on your guitar. The locking tuner is not the answer. But as you can see, it definitely aids in the speed of restringing a guitar. So we got the nut roughed out. 
we got the bridge thing figured out. Now um, I'm going to go ahead and make the bridge pickup. And I guess we need to worry about wiring. Tomorrow's going to be a pickup making day. So that's where we're at. I think um, we're going to spend some time tomorrow making pickups. That's what you're going to see in tomorrow's vlog. One of those will be winding that big Filtertron looking humbucker. Uh, but it's going to sound good. It's not going to be crazy like the one that was in here. And then we need to wire this thing up. And then look at this Bigsby on here. This is killer. This thing is going to be sick, man. I'm really excited about it. It makes me want to like have my own. Um, there is a couple of things I'm going to mess with. I'm a little bit worried about uh, the height of the bridge. So, I mean, we can shim the neck. That's no problem. Shimming the neck's no big deal um, because it is a bolt-on. So we will be able to put a couple of millimeters of shim in there with no issue whatsoever. Um, or a couple of degrees, probably, it's probably three degrees now. We'll probably have to bring it to like six, um, something like that. Should be no big thing. And I think it'll be awesome. Uh, make sure you go to dylancontest.com so that you can win this thing and enter to win it. And also, um, yeah, we'll worry about the whole, we want to, we want to talk some more about this Patreon class. Um, we got two of them this month. One of them is free. So don't forget that. Um, it's going to be cool. Um, and I need your input on it on the second one because the people that take the first one this month get the second one for free and then you get to kind of choose what we talk about. So Bigsby setup is coming. We got a bunch of exciting stuff. That's why I wanted to choose this guitar and why I wanted this guitar. Uh, why I hoped you ch would cho choose it actually because there's so many little things we can learn about setup and stuff on it and actually it kind of went a little further than I meant for it to go but that's okay this is a lot of fun it gets to, it, I'm learning some stuff I've never done a zero fret before this whole bridge situation is whew, it's a lot of work but it's fun thanks for hanging out and we will see you tomorrow